thank you for coming tonight. We have a great night planned. We have a lot of activities, a lot of fun stuff, a lot of interesting stuff. So I'm going to get right to it tonight. Certainly the man who needs no introduction, because you all know who he is, Dennis Prager. Please come up. And then we have two great guests, uh, Gloria Alvarez. Gloria Alvarez is a radio broadcaster and project director at the National Civic Movement of Guatemala. She lives in Guatemala City, is the host of a series of educational videos for the Freedom and Progress Foundation, and is the author of The Populist Deception. She's also the featured presenter in the newest PragerU video, Immigrants, Don't Vote for What You Fled. This video was released in English and Spanish and has one million views on Facebook and YouTube in 48 hours. Gloria, please come up. Mm -hmm. sit right here with you. I'm going to do some right now. <laughs> I just wanted to get a little cozier, right, make it a little more friendly. It's a non-issue. Right? Non-issue. Felipe Mora Brazil. Felipe Mora Brazil is a Brazilian journalist for Vija. Did I pronounce that right? Vija. Magazine, writing about politics and culture. This year he was recognized as Brazil's most influential political personality on Twitter. Really? Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> wow, you guys didn't know we had such celebs here, did you? <laughs> He's also the author of the Brazilian best-selling book, The Minimum You Need to Know to Not Be an Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I need to read that for sure. <laughs> Yesterday he filmed a video for PragerU in English and Portuguese. His video will explain how socialism has deeply harmed Brazil. Felipe. Thank you. I think I'll wait till uh, the drone passes. <laughs> Amazing. All right, everybody, it's great to have you. I'm telling you, it's not my house, and I'm telling you it's great to have you. That is what is known. I don't know if you guys know the word chutzpah. No. Okay. <laughs> not well known in Brazil and Guatemala. I will introduce chutzpah when I come down to speak. So it's a, it's a great, it's an American Jewish word meaning audacity, nerve. Any, got another word for me? What? Yeah, I covered it? Yeah. Anyway, uh, first of all, obviously, Steve and Janet, would you give them a hand? What they have done tonight uh, for us. This is a... Uh, I gotta keep checking the time because I, I I could just sit here and emote, and I mean it. I could e I could just emote, even though I prefer the rational. But I want to tell you the great side benefit of uh, having started PragerU with Alan, and that is you, the people that we have met. Uh, I have when my in my earliest days from high school. I, I like collecting stamps, I like collecting coins, but I always said I like collecting good people. And uh, my, my cup overfloweth, thanks to people like you. So I just, and of course, Steve and Janet, who are just newest members of my collection, if I could talk that way. By the way, it, it's, it's only a praise. If I'm a member of your collection, I'm just as, uh, just as proud. So, we are uh, at a crisis in, in America and in the West. I'll, I'll be talking about that much more when I give my own talk. These two people give us hope because Latin America uh, is a problem, uh, and I'm speaking not in terms of its people. Let me just say a few words, then you will do all the talking. But I, I want to say a few words. You'll find this of interest, an American's view of Latin America. I have been to both your countries and I have been to almost every country in, in Central and South America. I have taken hundreds of people on tours. I love going there. There is, it's like two worlds. The world of the individual Latin American, whom I just enjoy immensely, and then the values of Latin America, which are awful. That's how I have always come back from Latin America feeling and the fear in America is not, as the left despicably puts it, racial 
or, or color or ethnicity. It's only values. The fear is what values millions upon millions of people will bring into the country. The same with the Syrian refugees. The issue is what values are they going to bring in? Not, 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 the, not the ethnicity or even the religion of the person. The Pope of, of the Catholic Church, in my view, is, is a, his religion theologically is Catholicism, but in terms of values is leftism. The Pope was asked, uh, I don't know if you even know this, it would be interesting if you know this, the Pope was asked why doesn't he speak more about Islamic terror? And he said, why should I? Baptized Catholics kill their girlfriends in Italy every day. What kind of answer is that? Mm -hmm. Anyway, these two people are, uh, are reasons for hope. So I, I think the most obvious first question is, how did, did Prager University come to you? Or how did you come to Prager University? And just to show you that I am completely non-sexist, I will begin with Felipe. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Dennis. Uh, there was uh, an old Brazilian philosopher called Olavo de Carvalho. He used to say that in public debate in Brazil, there was no conservative point of view. So everybody should look for it where it exists, like in England or in the USA. And he is used to su suggest Roger Scruton, the English mm -hmm. philosopher, and Dennis Prager, the American author and talk show radio host. And I went to read uh, both of them, and I started to see your videos. And there was one that was really important to me because it's, I think, how big the government should be. And you talk about the five or seven consequences of the increase of the size and the power of the government. And all of these consequences happened in Brazil. The increase of the amount of corruption, because people inside the government sell the influence to people outside the government, and people outside the government want to buy the influence. And that's what it's really happening now in Brazil with the investigations, the Powerful politicians are being investigated, investigated are being arrested uh, for doing exactly what Dennis said in, in that video. And I looked at this and why didn't we hear this before? So it was very important and very e educational to people in Brazil. Uh, the increase of the taxes, uh, when you increase the size of the government, people should pay more taxes so you can afford it. The increase of the debt, the deficits, everything was right about Brazil. The abuse of power, the decrease of the individual li liberty. So our last 14 years of Workers' Party government made too much harm to Brazil. They, uh, Ronald Reagan used to say that uh, social program this, you should measure, I don't remember the exact words, but you should measure the success of social programs uh, with how many people, how much people uh, goes out from it. Right. Uh, and in Brazil, it's the exact opposite. Right. So the Workers' Party... And America. Put, yeah. <laughs> the Workers' Party put like 50 million people in social programs. And last week, a uh, Supreme Court judge said uh, the Workers' Party was buying votes doing this. And it was a problem because... Maybe they, we could they, import that Supreme Court justice to America. <laughs> In the place of Scalia, no? Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, that, that, I'm obviously we're going to come back to you in a moment. Yeah, so yeah. you, we came to you in this case, right? Well, a little bit of both. <laughs> I was invited to speak on CPAC and... Um, you all know CPAC, right? Yeah. Congressional PAC, okay. I mean, the kind of conservative PAC. Right. I'll, I'll tell you why I, I was invited. And uh, you, you know, you go to the ground floor and there's uh, all the stands of the different organizations that are members of, of CPAC and are presenting their projects. Uh, I work on radio, I work on TV, and I work in a civic movement. And one of the battles that I picked up uh, since the beginning of the year was against uh, the educational union leader of Guatemala. Because in Guatemala, 
99 cents of every quetzal, quetzal is our dollar, are, is, are stolen by the union. Uh, so there's one cent to do all the things that people want, you know, uh, feed the children in school, <laughs> buying books, uh, you know, uh, building the, the school. So there's no money and obviously kids don't get educated. So I started a campaign saying you don't need the government to educate you. In fact, the government doesn't want to educate you. The government wants you ignorant because if you're ignorant, then it's easy for you to vote for them. And if they steal from you, then you're not going to complain. So when I was walking by um, and I saw Prager's University stand and I saw that they did educational videos, I was like, great, because my message was don't depend on the government to educate you. You can self-educate you using technology, using the internet. As, as you play Pokemon Go, you can also read <laughs> what the founding fathers have to say about civil liberties. And so I approached the stand and I, I spoke with Marisa and I said, well, so here's my story. I worked in Guatemala. I am a, a, a libertarian. I studied in a university that is uh, uh, with libertarian principles. And in the radio and on TV, I've been trying to tell young people to approach to the ideas of a limited government. And I went to Spain to this uh, youth parliament. There were people from all over Latin America. And I gave a speech, an 11 minute speech, denouncing populism especially in Venezuela, in Cuba, Bolivia, Ecuador, Nicaragua, with the strategy of the socialism of the 21st century. I went back home, two months passed, and this video is put on YouTube, and it goes viral. And when I mean viral, it was like one million views in three days from all over the region, and they started calling us. Like, what, what is that that you're speaking about? Uh, rescuing the Republic and that's the only alternative against populism and so since then this video went viral in 2014 I started working throughout all Latin America I've been in Venezuela I've been in Brazil Chile Argentina Colombia everywhere and so John Stossel invites me to his show on Fox News because he was doing a special about socialism and he wanted to talk about socialism of the 21st century and one of the organizers of CPAC sees me there and he invites me to go and speak on CPAC and that's how I found Prager University. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, you're right, that's, it's a wonderful story, it is a wonderful story. So let me ask you uh, a personal question, both of you, and I'll go back to Felipe. When, uh, if, if I may ask, you're both so young, I, I feel okay in asking, how old are you? 35. 35? I, I remember 35. <laughs> uh, so when you were 20, what were your political views? Yeah, that's something I used to, uh, I like to say that in my youthness, <laughs> uh, I was more interested in soccer, samba, <laughs> go to the beach, and read a lot. So I started to read first literature, novels, and when I wa when started to study politics, I already had this dimension of the idiom, of the words, what they mean. And it was easy to me to distinguish who, were, who was telling the truth about the things that was happening in Brazil, the conservative or liberals. Because liberals use words that, I, I think they use these words to mobilize people, to make them to feel excited, but they, it, it doesn't mean, uh, they don't define this word, the consequences of this, like uh, uh, income inequality, social justice. I think it's something to, you know, it's a goal and, and you can do everything you want to reach this goal and you'll be, there's a pre-redemption for everything you do. So when conservatives were describing this phenomenon, they looked more sincere to me. So I, I guess I am on this side because they are telling the truth. So you started early. Uh, you, you, were, you didn't go left I, to right. You went nothing to right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, I, no, no, right. <laughs> I wasn't a, a young activist. Yeah. That's why, I, by the way, I often say that if your kid is drunk for four years at college, that may be a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, <laughs> Yaakov Smirnov is here. You, the, the trademark laugh. You, 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 you could pick it out in, in Staples Center. So, what about you? Were, do, were, do, were your parents uh, libertarian? I mean, how, how were you raised? Well, my dad is from Cuba, and my grandparents uh, actually were, since I was very little, telling me about Fidel Castro and communism and the uh -huh. lacks of liberty and scarcity. Okay. And so I knew that communism wasn't the way, but from my mom's side, she's half Guatemalan but half Hungarian. My Hungarian grandfather, he also escaped through Vienna because of the Soviet Union, so you can say that I'm genetically averse to <laughs> communist ideas. But that doesn't make you someone that is prone to free market just because. I had the blessing of going to Universidad Francisco Marroquin. This university started in the 70s uh, by this engineer. He was obsessed of why Guatemala was so poor, because we have all these natural beauties. And he found a pamphlet of Foundation for Economic Education, and he signed up to a seminar. He went to New York, and he met Leonard Reed, who wrote the I Pencil essay about how we all need the collaboration and the information of each other, you know, for the market to exist. And he had a bright idea because he said, okay, with these ideas, either I can make a political party, no one is gonna vote for me because there's no Guatemalan that enjoys these ideas. I can make a newspaper, but I'm only gonna preach to the choir, or I can make a university. And so the university was established, and it doesn't matter if you study medicine or psychology, whatever you study, you have to pass economics courses, public choice, Mises, philosophy, Hayek philosophy, so I went through all that. But still when I graduated, I say, okay, these are wonderful ideas, but are they applicable to Guatemala? I don't think so that much. So I kept on studying, I came to the Cato Institute, I saw how they did pragmatism, it was not only academics, but they got involved with day-by-day -day politics. And then I went to Europe to a very socialist university that actually inspired the Pope, uh, Leuven University, where the theology of liberation started. Theology of liberation was a branch of Catholicism later condemned by the Pope back then because it justified that the priests could get into the Marxist guerrillas that were going on in Latin America and they could kill people if it was for that uh, ideal. So when I saw how socialism works in Europe, how uh, debt keeps increasing, and how there's no equality, because the students like me had to pay more in the train, more in the airport, in order for that equality to exist, I definitely concluded that uh, liberty is the essence of the human being. It doesn't matter what, what part of the, of, of the world he is in. Well, that's, that's the hope, obviously, that the liberty is the essence of the human being. Am I, I have a somewhat uh, darker view of the human being. <laughs> I think that the essence of the human being is to be taken care of. I think people will trade in liberty to be taken care of. That's, that's the story of America today. That is the story of Latin America. It's the story of Western Europe. So I, I am not as, uh, as optimistic that the, there is this great yearning for liberty. Liberty comes with a lot of prices. I think, a, I think a lot of people can be convinced that it is it is worthwhile, but they have to first be convinced. Which brings me to another question. So I had a call from a Venezuelan listener, also discovered me through YouTube, uh, through Prager University, and then listened to my show because it's on the internet. So he called in one day, 27-year-old Venezuelan, and he told me something. And I feel, I admit, I'm, I'm, I'm truly admitting to something I should have known, but I want to know how true this is. He said, uh, he said, Dennis, you must understand it's worse than you think because the opposition to Maduro, that's the successor to Hugo Chavez in Venezuela, the opposition is not conservative. Yes. The opposition is also on the left. Yep. Yes. I thought, oh my God. There's no chance, <laughs> you know. So is, is, when you said, you said there was a conservative party? So No, no. Oh, there you isn't. said something was conservative. Uh, or maybe I got no, it wrong, it doesn't matter. Only intellectuals. Only, a, only a, few, a few intellectuals. A few, yeah. So it is true in both your countries. Yeah. It's basically left versus left. Yeah, exactly. Individual versus individual. And the moderate left. Yeah. yeah. 
So we have in Brazil 32 parties, and they're all left-wing parties. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. You have two parties, two big parties. And That's awesome. 32 <laughs> parties, and they're all left. They're all left. We have two brands of leftism. Exactly. Like Heinz, That's what we like say. Heinz ketchup. Well, That's the it, the yeah. thing is that the, the, the campaign advisors tell the candidate, listen, if you don't promise free stuff, there's no way people are going to vote for you. Like, the assumption is right. that the Latin American won't vote unless you offer free stuff, whatever it is. So with that assumption, the obsession of getting to power, there's no one thinking of like long-term policies. Everyone is thinking, how can I win the next elections? And in the case of Venezuela, the opposition, let's say Leopoldo Lopez, the famous uh, oppositor, he's member of the International Socialist. His wife goes all around the world, uh, you know, like begging for his uh, husband to get out of jail. But when she gets asked, what is your ideology? Because, of course, the socialist government of Maduro says that they are right-wing. She says, no, 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 we are socialists. We uh, are part of the international socialists. It is so sad because it's the lack of ideas, the lack of having clear what work of what doesn't work. It is like listening to the wife of a Jewish uh, a man in a concentration camp going all around the world saying, please liberate my husband from this concentration camp. But when she gets asked, what is your ideology? She responds in something like, no, 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 I'm a Nazi Democrat. And we are <laughs> pertain to the international Nazis. Right. It is this worrisome because the lack of people with the clear ideas of what works in economics and what doesn't work in economics, it's what's happening. Like you have, in this book uh, that, that I wrote with this uh, Chilean economist, The Populist Deceived, you have Fidel Castro. Because the other thing is, this is a strategy that has been going on in Latin America since Fidel Castro came in Cuba. And now it's called socialism of the 21st century. And when this century ends, then it's the 22nd century. They reunite every year. They started in Sao Paulo, Brazil, in the Foro of Sao Paulo in yes. 1990. So these guys are all organized. And then you have the opposition trying to win elections with advisors that tell them, if you don't vote for socialism, there's no way that you're going to win. So the, the, the hope is really is scarce. If I, if I were to ask your generation, a typical member of your generations in Guatemala and Brazil, why is our rich country so poor? What would their immediate answer be? Yankee intervention. Yankee intervention. <laughs> yeah, maybe something like this. Or corrupt politicians. I don't know. Uh, well, what if I were to ask them, why is North America rich and South America poor? Because they exploit yeah. the Middle East and yeah. Latin America. Because they exploit the Latin America. Yeah. Something okay, like it's that. a built-in answer. That's the built-in answer. I understand. It, it's, 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 there's, I, I was curious, so it, that's what your, their parents would answer, their grandparents would answer, and their great-grandparents would answer. So really nothing has changed? No, not really. Okay, so the hope then, this is my hope. I already told you where I'm pessimistic, I'll tell you where I'm optimistic, and, and please react. If I didn't believe this, by the way, we wouldn't all be here tonight because we would never have had Prager University star. And now I'm convinced it's true. It was a hunch. There are so many young people in America who we hear from who are changed in five minutes. My belief is that by and large, they only know propaganda, but they have no depth. There is no depth to their leftism. Mm -hmm. It is all emoted. It's all emotion. Exactly. So you can pierce that bubble. You can break that bubble exactly. with five minutes of logic. Do you think that's true? Yes, I think it's true. And I think PragerU videos are great for this. In Rio, I don't know if you saw the Olympic Games. We have the beaches. We have samba, carnival. So it's hard to make people read. <laughs> people want to do everything but not read. So there are, of course, everyone who reads, they are already an intellectual. 
So these people who read, they, they need a video to show their friends the, some complicated issues that they can't explain to their friends. And your videos, PragerU videos are great for this. So when people see it, they, exactly what I was trying to say, look at this. So they share it a lot and it's educational. It's, it, it's making the difference in Brazil. We, we are having a, a different uh, generation of young people now because the, all, of all the corruption in the Workers' Party government. And uh, last month, uh, Sao Paulo, the Brazilian biggest city, elected a right-wing politician to be the mayor, uh, but he is in a left-wing party. Yeah. That's what happens in Brazil. We have a few right-wing politicians, but they are in the left-wing party, and the party is always trying to, to take them to the left. But he was elected with a conservative speech. I won't raise taxes. This is something Workers' Party done, has done to Brazil. It harmed Brazil. So it's another kind of speech we are used to, to have there. So things are changing and we hope to educate more and more Brazilians to, to see the world like Prager you see. You're, you, you feel similarly? I think yes, because uh, when I work with different uh, young groups in Latin America, what I say is, listen guys, everyone in Latin America last year went to the streets in Ecuador, in Brazil, in Argentina, in Guatemala, in Mexico, for different reasons, but the same core, corrupt government. But the young people, when they go out and they start protesting, the, 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 the thing goes like this. We are protesting because the government is corrupt. And when you put them a microphone and you ask, so what's your solution? Uh, more government, because the yes. government should take care. So it's like, okay, if the government is the problem, exactly. why do you go to the streets to ask for more government? It doesn't make any sense. Because they don't believe that it's government. They think it's corrupt individuals. Exactly. And when an archangel with wings goes to the government, then everything is going to work. That's and they right. don't understand that if the government is huge, even Mother yeah. Teresa gets corrupt. So <laughs> when you tell this to young people, they are like, wow, you're right. Why should I expect the problem to be the solution? Mm -hmm. And then what you have to do is the Socratic method. Uh, there's this anecdote I had in Argentina. The, uh, we were presenting the book and this guy, you know, he says, well, I came here, you know, to listen to you, but you all put all the socialists in the same bunch. But I'm a Trotskyan socialist. Oh, God. So we are different, he says. And I'm like, how are you different? And he says, because I would not impose my <laughs> ideas on anyone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's try this, I say. I will read you the steps of the Communist Manifesto and you tell me which ones you disagree with. Okay? Okay. So I start. Abolition of property, yes. Abolition of freedom of expression, yes. Okay. I go through the whole list and he says yes to everything. And I said, what makes you different? And he says, well, I wouldn't impose these things. Okay, I say, what do you do with me? You come to my house, you want to expropriate? And I said, no. And he's like, well, but you have to say yes. Well, but I'm going to say no. What are you going to do? You're going to put me in a gulag? You're going to kill me? What are you going to do? Uh, you see, you're no different. Because imposing implies that there are free souls that won't just say, yeah, go ahead, take my stuff. They're going to resist. And when they resist, immediately violence is the only option. What we need to do is that Socratic method. So they respond themselves. Because what happens with young people is that they don't they don't take their assumptions to the ultimate consequences, you know? That's so right. we have to do that. And that's what I said on CPAC. Latin Americans come to the U.S., but when they come, they don't say, my gosh, this country works because there's a republic, there's limited government, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are respected. They have no academic intellectual background to make that analysis. They barely have middle school. So when the Democrats come and they offer free stuff, from them it's like familiar. It sounds familiar. It sounds like my home. Whereas the Republicans sounds like, you know, I don't know, they, they, they don't like me that much. And there, there's these people who are offering me free stuff. But the thing is this, the United States works because of that limited government, because those rights that back home are violated here are respected. Someone needs to make that brain connection in these voters. And that has to be 
Prager University and this kind of efforts because no one else is, is going to do it. That's right. That's, that's right. We, uh, they gave me uh, an idea. We, we, uh, we need to put out another Spanish and Portuguese uh, video uh, answering, uh, asking the question, why is South America poor and North America rich? That's good. That will interest, because, and then we will deal with all the answers. We'll answer their answers in the Socratic method, as it were. We'll even do it like that. We can almost, I could almost see. Okay, so this is the answer that they would give. Uh, do we have to uh, pretty much wrap up? So let, let me just, I'm, I'm just, this is pure curiosity. It, it, I, I reported on my show uh, last week uh, a, a report that came out that one third of American college students believes that George W. Bush killed more people than Joseph Stalin. So I am curious, if I were to ask that question of, uh, in Guatemala or Brazil, who killed more people, Stalin or George W. Bush? What, what, what do you think the answer would be? Do you I think they would even know who Stalin is? No, I think they, they would say George W. Bush, because in Brazil the media is all Clinton News Network. <laughs> Uh, they hate yeah, C C N George right. W. Bush. In, in, in the USA, you have half the country may right. they like that, him. Yeah. In, in Brazil, it's 100% because the media is all left-wing media. So they don't tell all the story. They, they just uh, maximize the mistakes and this kind of thing. So people don't like uh, Bush, uh, but, but they don't like Bush. You can, you, you can dislike Bush, but uh, they don't know the real story. Right, and the they mistake, probably the say, who, who, video who, about Stalin? The Iraq. who is Stalin? I would assume that there is ignorant. Yeah. Uh, yes. Your parents, I mean, you have a Hungarian parent, they know Stalin. Yeah. But, but that's not the case. I, I actually made a video uh, wearing a, a, a Russian hat with the communist sign, and I did a communism for millennials. Because most millennials are socialists because they don't know what socialism that's means. Right. This is the results of a Cato Institute research of 10 millennials, only one can mm, mostly accurate define what socialism is. And I started explaining who was Engels, who was Marx, what were the gulags, how it all started, because this history, it's not accessible. So it's, it's not their fault that they don't know it, it's that not their parents, not the schools is, is telling them. And they have no idea of proportions. It happens with, the, with this Chilean military dictator, you know Pinochet, he did reforms with the Chicago boys. That's why Chile is the best country of Latin America, because they implemented free market. Right. They think that Pinochet killed as many people as Hitler. Right. And in fact, right. 2,000 people died in Pinochet regime. 2,000 people. Right. Right. It was half a day at Gulag. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, that, that's exactly right. Uh, I just want everybody to know that Gloria's video and Felipe will be making a video shortly, uh, but Gloria's is both in English and Spanish. Why, uh, um, what, what is it, uh, why do you vote for what you fled? Not why, just don't. Oh, don't, sorry. Don't vote for what you fled. That is the, that is the theme. Is it, uh, oh, it says immigrants. In other words, hello, immigrants, don't vote for what you fled. It is directed to all the uh, largely Latin American immigrants, legal and illegal in the United States. And, she, and likewise, she did it in Spanish. Now, I knew it would, it would do extremely well in English, and it has. In two days, it's over a million views. But what's really excited me is that, is it correct, 350,000? It's, it's at a half a million? And that is a good sign. That means Spanish-speaking people are passing it to another one, to another one, to another one. People we would, who don't know we exist are being now touched in Spanish by her and PragerU, and that's big. Because I believe even for them, they, it, would, it could maybe be done in five minutes. They've never thought this. Why would I want to replicate what I ran away from? in the country that I ran to. So thank these two wonderful people, because it gives us hope. Uh, it really does. You, 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 give, you give us hope. It's very exciting 
and I, 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 will, I may see you next month in Guatemala, yeah. and, and, I, and I, we're going to work on my coming to Brazil. Yeah. And now here is Alan Estrin, whose idea Prager University was. Oh, I'm not introducing you now? Okay. Okay, fine. Thank you, Alan. Thank you all. We'll see you at dinner. Thank you.